I went to hell. That's how I got saved. What would I have to go to hell to get saved? It, it was so vivid to go to hell for me to get saved. Why can't I get a preacher to evangelize to me? Why can't I get someone from the church to give me a track? Why didn't I, get, I never got an invitation to go to church. What were the Christians? And then the Christians, all I heard from them said they were better than me. That's all they said to me. We better than you. So I got beat up in my mom's house by a miserable dad. And then the church was beating me up too. By telling me that I, were, I was worth nothing. I will never be nothing. That I was a loser. And I wasn't going anywhere. That God didn't love me. And I was getting that from the world. I was getting that from my daddy. And the church them invited me to church. No one told me that Jesus really loved me. No one ever told me that Jesus died for me. So Jesus had to take me to hell to prove to me that he loved me. Because the only time I got my freedom is when I went to hell and came back. And imagine, I went to a place of torment. Hell is, has an address. It's a real place. Why would I have a, I, I, I had a, why would I throw a hundred thousand dollars of witchcraft stuff away? Why would I throw that away? Why would, I, why would I change a daddy that I can see for a daddy that I can't see? Because I never seen Jesus. I used to sit with the devil and talk to him like I talk to you in human form. Human flesh would sit and talk all night long. I would sit with principalities and demons and talk to them all night long. I knew names. I know the principality that owns Insla. It's called Salabanda, African name. He runs Islam. That's why his color is green. And you see Islam, the color is green. Candelo, Candelo is, is, is the father of Haiti, the, the principality that runs Haiti. That's why you see a lot of Haitian people when they do witchcraft, they wear red. That's not the blood of Jesus. Demonic. See, I know all that. So what, why, would, why, why do I have to go to hell? Why can't you tell me about Jesus? Why can't you share the love of Jesus Christ and grab my hand and took me to church? Why did I have to go to a place that was torment? A place that, that I, I was in a train with Jezebel. A place, a, a place when, when the train hit. At first I, I, I was on earth and I went into this anesthesia sleep. And I remember me saying, I'm never going to serve Jesus Christ. I was saying, I'm going to be a devil worshiper tonight. I'm going to destroy those Christians. I'm going to kill them all if I have to before I die. And the only thing that, that came out of my mouth when I was going into this anesthesia sleep was, if, if you're real, then show me that you're bigger than my daddy. Ended up in a train filled with people. And, and the reason that train was filled with people, and you couldn't see their faces, but you saw the, it was fear in the train. It was this fear in the train. People know they were going to a place that they weren't coming back. And the reason they were on that train because the church wasn't doing their job. The church was too busy collecting the tithes and offerings and, and, and worrying about the money. And worrying about who wearing the better, the better suit. And who has the bigger house and who has the yacht and, and who's going to chip in for the plane. When people go on to hell, I'll not watch. So, so I ended up in hell and I saw witches and warlocks that I knew in hell. And, and I knew that this, as, soon as, the, as soon as the door opened the train, Jezebel was talking in the amount of tongues. That's why you got to be careful. Who talks in, in, in tongues? Because all tongues are not God. Discernment, man. I've been to places. I pray for people. That, that, I said, that's not God. That's the devil talking. Nick, I thought it was the Holy Spirit. I said, Jack, you better go, go, go fast. Do something. Get, get, get something that God will teach you what's different between one and the other. So how, how is it that... that, that I ended up in hell because it was your fault you didn't evangelize to me it was your fault they didn't tell me that Jesus loved me had a plan for my life all you did beat me down with your Bible and Jesus had to take me to hell to prove to me I was even looking for love I went to Catholic Church I was Catholic too and there's a lot of good Catholic people out there that love the Lord, that love Jesus Christ, but they've been misdirected by not telling them the truth. They love Jesus, they love the Lord, they want to go to heaven, 
but no one is telling them the truth either so I tell them the truth because I want them to go to heaven because they love God I don't beat them down with religion I don't beat them down saying this and this. I tell them no don't follow man follow Jesus the man and I explain to them and I tell them about the love of Jesus Christ that you can talk to Jesus anytime you want and he will respond back to you and he will take you to heaven I talk to Muslim people too I go to the car wash to wash my car all Muslim people they think I'm crazy I'm surprised they didn't tell me don't come back and wash your car anymore but I talk to them I tell them I tell them Allah is not the way dude so I'm not saying that to disrespect you but I'm telling you that because you know I come here and wash my car and God want me to tell you the truth Jesus is the way and they think I'm just crazy I said Jesus is the way and I, and I talk to them and I, and I let them know and they're like shocked like they still let me come back and wash my car because God favored me I talk to the Jewish people too I shake the Jewish people hand like this oh my God I'm so indebted to you I thank you for Abraham Isaac and Jacob I thank you for the father of Abraham they're like oh my God you Puerto Rican how do you know these things I said, I'm, I love Moses. We went down to the Red Sea. We got baptized. We came out on the other side free. I said, Esther, awesome. What a woman of God. They're like, you know the, you know the Torah? I said, oh yeah. Me and the Torah are like, like this. Because I'm planting seeds, man. I'm, you, I live in the 22nd. I'm not going to get my address. I don't want you to come to my house. But <laughs> I live on the 22nd floor. You get in the elevator with me, you're in trouble. I'm gonna tell you about Jesus. Why your mouth is shut? Why you're not talking to Jesus in the supermarket, in the cleaners? Why you're not telling people, hey, you got a problem? Is there something wrong in your life? My church prays. Won't you write your prayer down in this piece of paper? I take you to the church and I let them pray for you. And if you get a breakthrough, won't you come to the church and testify? Why are you ain't going out evangelizing? Why are you sitting on yourself with your miserable self and your sorry self? Why are you not being the church of Jesus Christ? Why, why you got too much? You, got, you, you can learn all the lyrics of a, of, of, of a song that belongs to the devil, but you don't know nothing about Jesus. Everywhere I go, I, I, I plant seeds. Then people tell me about global warming. I said, that's not true. I said, Jesus controlled the temperature. And they're like, how do you know that? I said, well, let me prove it to you. He created creation. People, we need, we, need to, we, we need to open up. We need to let people know. Why are you embarrassed of being a Christian? Why are you embarrassed? When you're young, when, when you, when you, with your homies or your friends, you don't say nothing about God. The devil played you. I got, I got, I got a, I, in my second book, I got a story about two friends that went out on a car ride. They were going to a game. And the guy was, he was embarrassed to put his Christian station. And they got into a car accident. And one died, the one that was in safe. And he ended up in hell. And he wrote a letter from hell, and, it, and it's just a story. He wrote a letter from hell saying, if you knew about Jesus, why you didn't tell me? Why, why you, I had to end up here when you knew all about Jesus. Why you kept it from me? Why you didn't tell me? Look where I'm at now because you're four. God will hold you accountable for the people he bring in your life and you kept your mouth shut. If I offend you with the cross, so be it. The cross is supposed to be an offense. Anyway, get over it. Get over it. All the way out. Somebody say all the way out. In fact, he brought them so far out that he allowed the enemy, Pharaoh, to chase after them. He allowed the enemy to chase after them because he wanted to ambush him so that he could completely annihilate any possibility of them going back to being where they were. And you know the story, when they got down to the Red Sea with mountains on, other si on either side to the Red Sea in front of them, that when they got to the Red Sea, God opened up a way for them and took them down to the waters on dry ground and brought them up on the other side and when Pharaoh and his 600 chosen chariots tried to follow them into the Red Sea then the walls that God held up for his people collapsed on the imitator you can't do everything you see me 
me do. You can't follow everywhere you see me go. I've got an anointing to go through some stuff that you can't go through. If you try to follow me, it's going to collapse on you. You can't do everything. You can't build like me. You can't move like me. You can't walk like me. Because when God graces you to go through something, you can go through something that would have fallen in on anybody else. Ooh. Can I get my preach on a little bit this morning? <laughs> and he brought them through and he brought them out and the walls collapsed completely. And the Bible said that Pharaoh and his chosen chariots got drowned in the Red Sea. And the Lord said, the enemies that you see today, you shall see them no more. That means you ain't never going to have to go through what you're going through right now. This is over. This is finished. This is complete. You will never go back through it again. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I feel the word of the Lord saying, never again. Look at somebody and say, never again. And he brought them through. And he brought them out. And he said, the enemies that you see today, you shall see them no more. There is no kind of celebration like the celebration when you've been through incarceration. When you get out, you praise God. You thank God. Miriam grabbed the tambourine and started beating it to the glory of God and said, I'm out. Glory to God. Every now and then you'll see somebody take a running spell. It doesn't make any sense to you because you didn't go through what they went through. But if you went through what they went through, you would praise him too. Somebody holler, I'm out. And they came out with a praise. And they came out with thanksgiving. I, excuse me, but I don't understand people who come out and don't praise God. I don't understand it. I'm skeptical of it. I don't believe it. I have trouble with some faith healers. Because in their service, they heal somebody who was blind. And the blind person said, oh, Brother Richards, I can see. I can see and I'm a believer and I don't believe it because I understand enough about human nature if I had been blind for 30 years and you touch me and my eyes open up it would be bedlam in this place somebody give God a praise when God really does something mammoth in your life there will be a reaction. I don't care how educated. I don't care how intellectual. I don't care how refined. If I snatch your educated self out of burning building, you're going to say thank you. You're going to be so thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Somebody holler, I'm out. Every now and then I got to praise God because I'm out. Every time I see stuff that used to bind me and it doesn't bind me anymore, I throw myself a party, bake myself a cake, get a hat on my head and hit the whistle, say, look at me, I'm out. Don't even matter anymore. I'm just glad.